Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is traditional Thanksgiving turkey, spatchcock style. Now I know everyone loves a whole turkey, that beautiful Norman Rockwell picture of this glistening big bird, but I would argue that a better way to cook a turkey is in the spatchcock style. And this is not a new argument for me. If you guys have been watching for any amount of time, you know how we love to spatchcock poultry. But if this is a new concept to you, let me break it down real quick. Essentially, the idea is you're gonna remove the backbone from the bird, be it a turkey or a chicken, whatever it is, so you can spread it all out into one flat level, then the white meat and the dark meat are gonna cook at about the same time, finishing at about the same time at two different temperatures. You see, white meat wants to be a bit lower to stay juicy, and dark meat needs to be a bit higher in temperature to make sure it's velvety. And that's exactly what you get when you cook spatchcock. Today we're gonna to be using very traditional flavors, brining the bird in a brine that consists of apple and sage and rosemary flavors, all good Thanksgiving flavors. We'll hit it with a nice savory rub that we've developed specifically for turkeys. So let's jump right into breaking down this bird. Today we're working with about a 14 pound bird, maybe uh, just a little bit shy of that, but this is really that range of size that I like to work with. 12 to 14 pounds on a turkey. I find these smaller birds, uh, they end up cooking a lot quicker and they'll also retain their moisture a lot better than drying out a big old 24 pound bird or something. In fact, I would rather cook two of these 12 or 12 to 14 pound birds um, any day of the week than try and cook one that's as massive as like 24 pounds. Um, so I recommend staying on the smaller side. Now as we look at the anatomy of this bird, this backbone runs right here. We're gonna take our poultry shears and just cut right along either side of that backbone to remove it. So I'll start down here by the thighs. You're gonna come pretty close to a joint right there at the thigh. Cut right through that. And then up to where the neck would have been. And we'll flip it around and go right back down. Definitely takes a little bit of force, but a good pair of shears go a long way in helping you get that backbone out. Also, we're not going to need that little tail on there, so we'll cut that off. And there you go, you've got your backbone completely removed. Uh, although you certainly can save this, make a little turkey stock for your turkey gravy with it. So the next thing we've got to do to get this to lay flat is we need to kind of press it flat. And we can help that along by doing a little snip right there at the top of that breastbone and just crack that down. So now we we'll kind of see what we're talking about when we say that that dark meat and the white meat are on relatively similar level so they can cook more evenly. Now you could move on from here, do nothing else. You're just gonna have to pick around some bones when this thing is done. Or you can do a little extra trimming right now, which is what I like to do, uh, just to pretty this up and so that we don't have to worry about that extra trimming at the end. I know I've got more skin up here than I need, so we'll trim that down. And then down here at the bottom of the breast, where that meets the legs, I'll typically just cut alongside the breast here. Maybe we'll just take these last few ribs out as well. And then you've got a chunk of the backbone that's still stuck to the thigh, but you can very easily slide your knife underneath there, head toward that joint, and cut right out of there. Same thing going the other direction, just stay right on that bone. You're not losing any meat here. This is just all bone. So now check this out. You can get underneath the skin to season all of this meat under that skin now that we didn't have any access to before. Now there's also this kind of blade bone that runs right down the side of the backbone. And it's a lot easier if you remove this now. You gotta be careful. I've definitely hurt myself a time or two pulling on this thing. So if you want to, you can kind of help dig it out with a knife if it doesn't easily pop out. All right, so we popped it at that joint. Just remove that little blade bone. It'll sit a little better that way. Uh, if you've got any kind of, you know, yucky looking stuff, 
I don't know what the technical term for all that is, but these little veins, we can take, take those out. Of course, we're not going to be eating those in the end anyway. Any sort of gizzards or organs left behind. Let's do the same thing on this side. Just cutting right along the breast. Take out those last two or three ribs. Use your knife to remove that flap. We'll work it back to that backbone. It's still a little bit of that backbone sitting right here. And again, just gonna slide your knife underneath it. Cut right out to the edge. Again, this is all optional, but it will make pulling and cutting the chicken in the end a little bit easier for you. There's that blade bone. We want to pop that out. There we go. Barely even need a knife for this one. Now, if you've made it this far, another great thing you can do at this point is remove the wishbone, which runs right here along the base of the breast. Um, and it makes it really easy to just slice that meat right off the bird in the end. You just slip your knife right underneath, go right out to the edge. Do the same thing on this side. And then you're just gonna finagle this a little bit, give it a twist, use your knife, whatever you need to do to pull that out. All right, so wishbone is gone. It makes it a little bit easier to slice those breasts. Now look at all this that we've got exposed now. We've got thigh meat, we've got leg meat. As I flip this over, we can even pull this skin back and now you've got the breast meat exposed and we can get seasoning underneath all of that. Now our turkey's ready to go into the brine, so let's put that brine together. We're gonna be using the wet brining method today, which means that bird's gonna be fully submerged in liquid. Now, this could be any, any type of brine. It could be as simple as water and salt and a little bit of sugar, but we wanna add a bunch of flavor as well as moisture to the bird so it tastes great and it's harder to dry out. But we're gonna make this real easy on you. Today we are using the famous Sweetwater Spice Classic Holiday Turkey Bath. So this is apple-based, as I said before, but it's got a ton of aromatics and herbs in it as well so that you really pack that flavor into the turkey. So we'll start just by dumping the concentrate into the briner bucket. We're using two bottles today, which will easily get you two 15 pound birds in this one bucket if you're looking to feed a crowd. And I don't wanna waste any of that goodness in the bottle, so I'm gonna rinse this out. Now we need to add one gallon of water or liquid, whatever that may be, uh, per bottle. So we're gonna do two gallons of liquid. We'll measure this out here one at a time. And while you could do uh, all of that water and you're gonna have plenty of flavor, uh, instead today I'm also, I'm just gonna split it half and half water and apple cider so we can really punch up that apple flavor. We'll start with that water, one gallon, and then we're gonna add a gallon of cider as well. So one last thing before we get the bird in here, we wanna add a half cup of kosher salt per bottle of brine concentrate. So there's one cup of our Jacobson kosher, and then we start whisking. One of the great things about this brine concentrate is you don't have to heat it up and cool it down. You just put it all in at room temperature, give it a good whisk so the salt starts to dissolve and you're ready to drop your birds in. The turkey is gonna go right down into that brine. Now the great thing about this is, like I said, you can fit two birds in here easy without changing the amount of brine that you have. There's enough room for two. I'm gonna lock that plate in place to keep it submerged, and then you wanna brine this thing for one hour per pound. So 14 pound bird, 14 hours in the brine. Don't be worried if you go a little bit over that. You know, the bird that we're actually gonna to cook today was in the brine for about 16 to 17 hours. It's not gonna hurt it. But we'll move on to that next step here in just a moment. Now this is the turkey that we just put in, but for the sake of demonstration, I wanna show you guys what you need to do the morning after it's been brined. So you're gonna take your whole bird out and you're gonna plop it down on a wire rack. You wanna try and get any excess moisture out of there. 
Make sure it's draining out. And then you're gonna spread this thing out to expose as much skin as possible. We'll give it a little pat with the paper towels. So this will start the drying process for you. And then this is what you wanna let sit open, just like this, so the air can move around it on top, below, dry everything out for about 24 hours in the refrigerator. And what you get next is this bird right here. So that's our bird that was brined for about 16 hours, sat open in the refrigerator for 24 hours. You can see how the skin is darkened, it's changed a bit, and it's dried out a little bit. Now this is ready to be seasoned and go onto the smoker. So we wanna get this seasoned underneath the skin and on top of the skin. You gonna make sure that that skin is released from the breast. And pull it back like this. Expose all that meat, but leave it intact. And then with the legs and the thighs, same kind of thing. Just pull that skin back, kind of work your hand underneath it. And now you've got access to all this meat. We're gonna start by seasoning the underside. And the seasoning we're using today is the Cattleman's Grill Ranchero. Like I said, we developed this with Thanksgiving turkeys in mind, although it's great on all poultry. It's a bit savory, you know, your salt, pepper, garlic, onion, but it's got a few little extra special secret ingredients. All of that goodness will go really well with that apple, herb, aromatic flavor going on from our brine which we did not rinse off, left, left it to sit on the surface so that that flavor from the brine is actually right there on the surface of the meat where it can affect the flavor. Once we flip, we get these breasts all the way up. Nothing can stop me. It's all sitting in there real nice. All right, so once you've got that seasoned underneath the skin, underneath the bird, we can transfer this back to the wire rack that we're gonna cook it on. This time over a clean foil lined pan so that we can catch any juices that cook out of this and add them back to the turkey or to your turkey gravy. And at this point we'll hit the skin with our ranchero. Let's not miss any nooks and crannies. Then as always with the uh, wings, I like to either, well, really my preference is to tuck them in. You can also clip that wing tip, but then it doesn't quite hold the whole wing in as tight. And then we'll give this just a few minutes to kind of set up and attached to that skin and it's ready to go onto the grill. But today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. We're running it at 325 degrees with a combination of cherry and pecan pellets. I'd consider this the roasting range. So it's hotter than smoking, but not as hot as grilling. And it gives you the best of both worlds. It, it gives you the smoke that you like, but it also helps render out that skin a little better. We're gonna pop this right up top. We can get a little bit of radiant heat coming off this hot steel right above it, but plenty of room for that air to move all the way around the bird. I'm gonna throw a probe in here. And we really need to just monitor the temperature in the deepest part of the breast. We wanna see that come up to about 155 before we pull this out. It'll carry over to about 160, 165. The turkey's been on the grill for a little over two hours now, and we've reached our internal temperature target, which is 155. So let's take a look. So this is looking really pretty, nice and crispy around the edges. Great browning, fat is rendered out of that skin. And of course, we've been monitoring the temperature inside the deepest part of that breast, which is at 155 now. That'll come up a little bit more. If we're checking out the deepest part of these thighs, they should be in that 175 range, which is right where we're at. So we are ready to pull this off and let it rest for a little bit before we slice into it. Now that this has had a chance to rest and all those juices kind of redistribute all the way throughout the turkey, I'm gonna show you how I like to break these down. 
So the easiest thing to take off first is that thigh and leg. And then of course you can break that down even further by slicing down right at that crease. Then you're just gonna pop this, I'll show you right where you need to cut in between those knuckles. Now you've got your turkey leg, your turkey thigh, which you can either serve whole uh, if someone's feeling hungry or shred this up, or you can even dig the bone out. It comes out a little bit easier now that it's fully cooked. So those tendons are broken down. Take that bone out of there and then you can slice the thigh itself. Serve slices of dark meat. Or, like we'll see on this one, pop it, separate it, and then just shred that meat right off of there. There's your, look how super juicy that is in there. Isn't that incredible? Well, I love that I am smelling the cider right now. I'll even just chop this skin up and kind of sprinkle it throughout there. Because, you know, everybody wants to get a little bite of that. Now with the breasts, we're going to find right in the middle where that breastbone is. Just make a cut straight down there. Come on one side of that breastbone and slice all the way down to the rib cage. Follow that rib cage around. And then you can separate the breasts out completely. Now you've got your full turkey breast. Again, look at just how juicy that is in there. And then this we can turn into some really nice slices. You hear that great crunch on the skin. And then this you can fan out really pretty on a platter and just let people take a slice at a time. Look at that slice. It looks really nice and juicy inside. Thank you, brining. Get a little bit of that skin on top. Let's have a taste. Mmm. For sure tasting that apple. Not only the base of our brine, but also the liquid that we added to that brine. Skin has a great crunch around the edges, but it's just rendered nicely the rest of the way around. And then you're getting all of those like, all those herbs that give you the holiday feels, you know, you're, you're tasting that rosemary and the sage. As far as white meat goes, you can't beat that. It's got to be juicy and it's got to have flavor. And then of course we've got our thigh meat. That's just about my favorite right there. Mm. Great chew to it. Just velvety smooth. That's what you get when you get that temperature up above 175 in the really dark meat. And boy, it's got a nice bit of smoke to it. I know we're cooking a little higher, you don't get quite as much smoke. It's a light smoke flavor. That's definitely what you get when you're at roasting temperatures, but it's still there. It's present for sure. This one just screams classic holiday to me. I mean, classic Thanksgiving flavors, great savoriness, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of herb. It's a really well-rounded Thanksgiving bird. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. In fact, we're gonna make it real easy for you. All of the things used in today's recipe will be put together in a kit so you can buy it all with one click and make your holiday dinner stress-free. If you enjoy that recipe, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.